So I really enjoyed um, Hurtado's book as a whole. I just thought it was a great background to all the things that were going on in the Greco-Roman world and how Christianity was so very different to all of that um, and how Christianity could have spread so quickly and been set apart so easily, especially in the, like such a pantheon of religions and gods to choose from at that time that this little tiny band, um, you know, basically of nobodies at the moment, um, expanded to take over half the empire within, you know, a generation basically. So um, I just thought that was very interesting. Um, probably the main point that stuck out to me, and I'm kind of looking through um, <clears throat> uh, chapter two, is the separation of the sacred and the secular spaces and how very different uh, that was. It was just sort of this new concept overall. Um, it made me think about um, America and the separation of church and state and how that has just happened really in the last 200 years. Um, that, you know, we've began to think about religion as something separate from our daily lives, um, that this was not something that was thought about back in the Roman era at all. Like, this was just part of your daily life, part of who you were, uh, part of what you did, and how you, you know, lived and experienced life. Uh, when you think about the fact that prayer was only removed from schools in the United States in the 1960s, so just about, you know, six decades ago, you know, this was still such a part of our integrated life. And so for millennia, it had been religion was part of life. And so that's just very different than our modern conception of, you know, your religion can be very separate from your, you know, politics. We don't always think that in America sometimes, but it's true. Um, so your religious beliefs are separate from, you know, who you are as a person and the business that you do and the daily life that you live. And and many people, um, you know, live their religious lives solely on maybe a Sunday um, versus, you know, letting it affect their, their everyday life. Um, so I think the idea that um, Christianity was asking its followers to step out of some of these spaces of life based on their sacred beliefs was a really radical idea at the time, that you could be at a dinner party where they would be potentially sacrificing something to the gods, and, you know, you as a Christian now, we're trying to not do that. Um, Christians believed in one God and the fact that they professed that he was the only God. Um, if it had just been another God that they could um, worship, that probably wouldn't have been a big deal. But the fact that they said, no, this is the God, he's the only God, um, that began to really challenge the Greek and the Roman mentalities of the time. Um, so this was really seen as ridiculous, I think, to their contemporaries. Um, not just that, but it became dangerous because it, it was somewhat anti-patriotic to the empire. The empire was sustained at the gracious whim of the gods that they served. And so you have these gods that you're sacrificing to, you know, on a daily basis. Um, and now all of a sudden you've got this group of people who are not doing that. And so they can be seen as very anti-patriotic. Um, it could even be seen as atheistic to say that they believed in one god at the dismissal or the expulsion of all the other gods from their lives might be looked at as atheistic, which is really a different perspective for Christians today to think that Christians originally might have been considered uh, atheists. But I think it's good to just, as, we, as you look at that background that Hurtado begins to paint, um, to pause and consider that I think this is much like the United States today. You know, America will accept your alternative beliefs, but they will not accept your intolerance. So we've got, you know, um, a very relativistic society. We have a, you know, that's your truth and this is my truth and let's just live and let live mentality so much so that, you know, when Christians raise any type of a standard that there is sort of this deep, nearly national, impetuous demand for the silencing of the church that I think in some ways could parallel the culture of what was happening in this Greco-Roman world um, that, you know, it wasn't just like, oh, you you have a God, you know, that's fine. If you have a God, it's okay. But to say you have the one God, that demanded to be silenced, um, which is where you start seeing some of the, you know, persecution come in. And I think that's a little bit, like I said, where America is today sometimes, you know, to, oh, you want to live that way, you have your Christian beliefs, that's fine. Um, but once you say, no, there there is a black and white standard and this is the way, then there begins to be this cry that they want, you are now, you know, you are the person that's intolerant. We're starting to see those tables turn, I think, in America more. 
more and more. So um, the main difference is that, um, you know, we exist, like I said, on the other end of the spectrum of sacred and secular, you know, whereas they were um, not able to hide because their daily lives so intersected with religious beliefs. Um, it's very possible for Christians in America to hide our beliefs in society today. Um, so that would have been what identified the church in the first century. Um, now, the pastoral side of me says, you know, if the church would really live as the word is calling us to, we would be easily identified to our world. But um, that's a discussion for another time. So uh, stepping back into the idea of the first century ideas of uh, religion, her title notes, it wasn't so much about religious activity or like an optional part of life that you might dabble in. It's it's more like an attitude of virtue. It is the way of life that you live. So it's in this mindset that we should even read the letters of Paul. He's not speaking to Christians um, as we've come to think of uh, it today, uh, or he's not speaking of Christianity, really, I should say. He's not speaking about Christianity the way that we think about it. He's promoting Christianity as a mindset um, that specifically calls people towards obedience in Jesus Christ. Um, but serving Jesus was a major problem for these early believers because to serve him meant not serving other gods and not serving other gods meant that you denied their existence. Um, and this was just unacceptable in the first century. Therefore, they had this paradox that existed. Um, the acts that were considered patriotic to most Romans uh, now were designated as idolatrous to followers of Jesus. So this is where we see that daily life and the integration of the sacred and the secular spaces really posed a challenge to first century believers. They could not um, just ignore the gods. They would have to actively abstain from or outright deny their powers. Um, so this monotheism, it wasn't just uh, inherently new um, because the, the Jews had had this stance for centuries. But the difference with Christianity was that it wasn't defined by ethnic lines. So it wasn't even bound by economics. Um, there was no outwardly distinctive feature of a Christian. It was a lifestyle and a religion that were wholly chosen by the person on their own, um, which meant that there was many Gentile believers that likely had participated in worshiping the gods prior to their conversion and then suddenly were withdrawing. And that was certainly a cause of concern for many in the empire. Um, now, while followers were expected to deny other gods, what outsiders found strange was that Christians really lacked what they thought of sort of as daily religious practices. For example, there, there's no altar, there's no image or shrine, there's no sacrifices, there's no priesthood, and instead there's a great deal of relationship building which was meant to govern the ethical and moral behavior of the adherents. So to lack this type of worship and still deny the pantheon of gods that could be uh, worshipped was really seen as subversive to the empire because again worship of the deities was thought to provide divine protection uh, to the different cities that that they lived within. Um, now Christians did gather which Hurtado does state um, and it might kind of be reflective of some of the Jewish synagogue practices um, you know which the, you know Jewish beliefs were such a matrix you know part of the matrix of the early Christian uh, beliefs uh, of Jesus followers, but in the broad spectrum of the Roman world, a call to gather together and to worship was a very distinctive practice of Christians. Um, also distinctive were the characteristics of the Christian God. Uh, like we said, he was transcendent. He was seen as the God, not a God to be worshipped for a specific reason or place or purpose, but he was the transcendent God. Um, also, he wasn't characterized as many of the gods were. Many of the gods were characterized with these human characteristics. Um, and the god of Christianity was not. Uh, not only that, he was interested in humanity. He did not require a sacrifice, um, but yet he demanded your whole life, um, basically, as a sacrifice. And so all of these things was really what encompassed the central theme of Christianity was about love a God that loved them. And that was completely different uh, than anything that the the Roman Greco world had experienced, Greco-Roman world. Um, I really liked how Larry Hurtado outlined this. Um, he went very in depth uh, with it, so almost to the point of being a little repetitive at times. Um, but I think he gets his point across really well. Uh, I know he's looking into the background. The thing I wish he would have brought up a little bit more was not just so much how the Greco-Roman world was differentiated, like Christianity differentiated from the Greco-Roman world, but 
I wish he would have gone a little bit more into the impact that Christianity had on that world. Um, so maybe that's a different book for a different time, but I just felt like that was one of the main things that I felt like was lacking in the book that I wished he had done a little bit more about um, the impact that Christianity had and not just the impact that uh, the Greco-Roman world had on forming Christianity.